Hi YouTubers and welcome to one of my videos. This is going to be do, to do with the Talbot Express Auto Sleeper and it's to do with problems of gear change. In the past I've had problems with gear change and um, the situation has been when I've driven up a steep hill I stop the vehicle and try and select reverse it won't go into reverse gear until I turn the engine off and leave it for about five minutes restart the engine and then it will go into reverse gear and I've done a fair bit of research on the forum and on YouTube and also speaking to coastal motorhomes and they come to the conclusion the same as me that it's regarding the engine mounts or particular the rear engine mount which can sag so what I decided to do is buy a kit of or three engine mounts which is all of them in one go and it works out slightly cheaper and change them all and I gradually change them all and I've done videos of me changing them when I'd finished changing the engine mounts, I hit a problem. And the problem was that the engine itself was one inch higher, roughly 25 millimeter higher in the engine compartment. That gave the symptom, of, as well as not having reverse gear, I didn't have fifth gear. So that proved to me that it was something to do with the engine mounts as the engine had sagged that much. So I decided to look at the linkage and to do that, um, to get at it easy, in my particular motorhome, Tolford Express, it's removing the spare wheel, removing the spare wheel metal carrier, which is basically two bolts and to make it even easier I removed the air filter and some of the air filter hoses and that gave me more access to the gear linkage from inside the engine compartment and it's a bit experimental but I thought as the engine has been raised an inch it means that the um, gear change rods would have to be shortened and that's pure guesswork and what I found there's two basic gear chain rods as you look in the engine compartment that one goes front to back and one goes left to right I took it all off and there's little horrible clips and then you can prise the ball joints apart I then had to take the rods into um, the workshop or my shed I should say put them in a vice and undo them because they're threaded the, the ball joints for the linkage are threaded onto the rods and um, and they are adjustable a lot of people think they're not but they are adjustable and so I loosened I marked everything loosened the ball joints and the nuts clean the threads up put a piece of, um, put some copper slip on them and then reassembled them and pure by guesswork I decided to shorten the front and back rod by I think it was 10, 10, 15 millimetres something like that and reassembled it I then started work on the um, rod that goes from left to right in the engine compartment or from driver side to passenger side and I shortened that by five millimeter and I reassembled it and hey presto all the gears work and instantly from the driver's position I noticed that they are 
in a slightly different position to what they was before and it's just a matter of getting used to driving it again and touch wood since then I've been able to select all the gears now while this was apart and I could get at the reversing switch I decided to drain the gearbox down and do an oil change on the gearbox. Um, I also had a problem where the oil was pitching out of the seals and it's only the seals been changed only just under a year ago, you know, the drive shaft oil seals. But again I've done some research regarding this and I discovered that the gearbox originally was a, a four speed gearbox and it got modified to become a fifth gear gearbox where the fifth gear is lubricated by splash. Now then I also found out that it's quite critical the oil level in the gearbox. Now there's two drain plugs on the gearbox on the, on the um, Travotex mass. One of them drains the differential, the other drain plug drains the gearbox. They're quite difficult to undo but I managed to undo them and I drained it off and the oil was very very black. I let it stand and all the oil came out and I put the plugs back in and then I was looking at the research and speaking to coastal motorhomes and they told me it's absolutely critical you don't overfill them. Now with the plugs back in it's a process removing the reversing switch now because the link it's not far from the linkage you can get at it through the bonnet with the spare wheel out and everything else I pulled the wires off they only push connectors for the reversing switch there is a copper washer or an aluminium washer around the switch so if you remove the switch make sure you don't lose that I cleaned any muck around the thing and you actually refill the gearbox through the reversing switch. If you refill it through the dipstick hole, you put too much oil in the differential. Now, you start by putting 1.4, exactly 1.4 litres of oil through the reversing switch hole and that goes straight into the gearbox. You wait for that to settle and you then remove the dipstick and look at the mark where you filled it to and then you scratch a line on the dipstick where the oil is or you could cut a small line in it with a, a small joint junior hacksaw you then when you've done that you put your dipstick back in you then put into the reversing switch hole 200 millilitres of oil Now what happens is the um, gearbox has a dividing wall in it. When you fill up to 1.4 litres, some of it overflows into the diff. Not a great deal. But adding the extra 200 millilitres gives the diff, the lubrication, the correct amount of oil for lubrication. 
or you could just put 1.6 litres in to the reversing switch hole first go. You could do it that way and mark it. And you will find that the markings on the dipstick are completely different to the markings that are already on it. And it's to do with the fourth gear and the fifth gear and the way it's constructed inside. And the dipstick is from the four speed gearbox. And when they added the fifth gear, they carried on using the dipstick. So if you use the dipstick all level, you overfill it and you put pressure on the oil seals and it will pish oil everywhere. So if it goes in a garage and they do the servicing for you, make sure you tell them that they've got to remove both drain plugs because although the dipstick may read empty, you'll probably find there's over a litre of oil in it. And if they put 1.6 litres on top of it, you can have oil everywhere. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video and hope you find it useful. And um, what I'll do, because it's too hot to be with the van, I'm actually sitting in a house at the moment, I've decided just to have some photographs rather than an actual moving video for you. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like. And um, I hope this answers quite a few of the questions I've had to do with gear change problems. The gearbox collar does wear, by the way, on the top. You can get a new collar and you can get new linkage, which is more adjustable and all the rest of it. But to be perfectly honest, I don't know whether it's actually needed to do so. So once again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Comments welcome. And share, basically. This might help a lot of other people out.